In this video, you'll learn how to install Homebrew on your Mac. Homebrew is a free open source package manager that makes the installation of software on Mac OS easy. It can be used as a package manager for Linux, but that will be in another video. To start, we'll go to brew.sh. The command to install the software is right there on the home page. We can click the copy button and run it in a terminal window. But wait, isn't it dangerous to run a script you found on a website on your computer? Yeah, you bet it is, and in no other circumstances would I recommend you do so. But Homebrew is a well-known and trusted tool. However, you should still be cautious. You can read about the security assessment of Homebrew that was done recently at this location, and decide for yourself if it's a tool you can trust. Still watching? Before we run the script, let's look a bit more closely at the command so we know what it's doing to our computer. First, bin bash specifies that the command will be executed by the bash shell. The dash C option tells bash to run the command that follows as a string. Curl is a command line tool for transferring data to or from a server. The options FSSL are used to specify the curl should follow any redirections, show errors if any, and use SSL to encrypt the data being transferred. The URL ending in .sh is the location of the homebrew installation script. The dollar sign parentheses syntax passes the output of the curl command as an argument to the bash command. Let's go ahead and run the command. It prompts us for a password since sudo access will be required for some of the work to be done. After a moment, it tells us the following directories will be created, and then Xcode command line tools will also be installed. These are developer tools that the Homebrew package manager may need for some of the software packages it installs. Let's press enter or return to continue. We'll fast forward through some of this work, but right now it's downloading the scripts to install Homebrew, which creates the directories mentioned above, and uses sudo and change group to set permissions for the directories, changes ownership, and some other administrative activities. Then it downloads the Xcode command line tools and installs them. And once all this is done, it downloads and sets up the actual Homebrew software. After a little while, we see the message, Installation Successful. Homebrew documentation is available at docs.brew.sh slash manpage. To run Homebrew in the terminal window, we enter brew and some command. The command brew space list will show us what packages have been installed on our machine. So let's run brew space list. Whoops, what happened? As usual, I forgot to read the information on the screen. Notice where it says next steps, run these commands to add brew to our path. Let's copy the two commands and paste them into our terminal window. The first command adds the eval brew shell environment to our existing .z profile or creates it if we don't already have one. This file is sourced for environment information when you log into your Mac user account. The next line runs the command for our current shell so we can run brew commands right now. Okay, that's done, so let's run the brew install command again. We didn't get an error, which means the command worked, but it returned no results, meaning we have no packages installed. Great, at this point, we've successfully installed Homebrew on our machine. Before we go, let's install a package you might find useful. If you've ever used Linux, you might have seen the top command. Using the top command, you can see all the running Linux processes in real time. HTOP does the same thing for your Mac. To install it, we simply type brew install htop. We see that it has a dependency it needs to add called ncurses. This toolkit allows developers to create GUI-like terminal emulator applications. After Homebrew installs ncurses, it gets htop. Notice Homebrew tells us htop needs to run with sudo. This is because it needs root privileges to see the information on running processes. And now to run htop, we simply type in sudo htop. And here we see a display very similar to what we'd see with top on a Linux machine. We can use our mouse to select entries on the table. Let's sort by CPU utilization. And that shows us the values from least to most. When we click it again, it sorts in reverse order. Then we can sort by memory utilization. And we can even use the mouse to click on F10 to close out of the application. 
All right, that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.